Today, we are going to bring one of Apple Motion's very best animation tools over into Final Cut Pro. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this effect and use it in your videos right now. Opening up Apple Motion, if you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we are going to select the Final Cut effect, and you can leave your preset, frame rate, and duration at whatever you like. From there, we'll go ahead and just push open. The first thing we need to do is create a line for this animation to move along. So to do that, we'll come on down next to this rectangle, click on this down arrow and select the line tool. I'm gonna click and drag. You can hold shift to keep it completely straight, but it really doesn't matter. After that, we can go over to the inspector and I recommend just dropping down the width. It really doesn't matter, but I find it's just a little easier to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this into a whole new group and we can just call this the animator. With that line selected, we can go up to behaviors, go down to shape, and then select track points. We are going to use this track points effect to make it so we can move this line to whatever part of the screen we need to. However, there is something else we need to make that happen. We are going to need to import an image. So I'm gonna push Command I, and I'm just gonna locate the image that I want to use. Now, my image looks like this tracker, but it really can look like anything. I'm gonna go ahead and push Import. So now I have this basic tracker, and I'm just gonna drag it roughly into place with this red line. With that tracker selected, I'm gonna push Command D to duplicate it, and we will just rename that to tracker 2. I'll also rename this one to be tracker 1. Now that we have our trackers in position, let's select the track points effect on our line. We are going to drag in tracker 1 over into the source and that will adjust your tracker preview to look something like this. Now currently if I were to move this tracker it wouldn't do anything. What we need to do is go into our track points under transform change it from mimic source over to attach to source. So now by moving that tracker you'll see that the whole line moves. But we don't want the whole line to move we want just one of the points on our line to move. So to adjust that we'll go back to track points and we will disable track 2. So now now just track one is being adjusted by our tracker. After that, let's select track two and drag it roughly into position on the other side. We can select track points and I'm going to rename this to be track points one. Then I'm going to push command D to duplicate it. After that, we can drag in tracker two. We can disable track one and then re-enable track two. After that, we'll just ensure that it is in fact attached to source. So now if we select tracker two, we can drag that and you'll see how this line is moving wherever we move this track points to. But unfortunately in Final Cut Pro, we don't really have the ability to move these track points in a really easy way. That is where we are going to create some on-screen controls. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this animator group and create one more new group. Let's just call this group the OSC, which stands for on-screen controls. After that, we can jump over to our library, locate under generators, the color solid. We'll just drag that into our OSC category, then we can disable the visibility on it. Move on up into your filters and go down to blur, then locate the gradient blur. You'll see that the gradient blur gives us these nice on-screen controls that we can move around, but we need to attach them to our tracking points. Go ahead and re-expand your animator and locate tracker one. Jump inside of your inspector and go to the properties panel. In here, you'll see your position parameter. You're gonna need to expand it. Finding the X value, click on this down arrow, select add parameter behavior, and we are going to link. So now we are linking the X parameter to whatever we want, which in this case is going to be the position from our gradient blur. So let's go ahead and drag in the color solid into this well. By default, it's going to think we want the position of this color solid to apply to this tracker, but that is not what we want. We want the effect, the gradient blur to affect our tracker position. So under compatible parameters, we can go down to the bottom, find filters, gradient blur, then select X. Now that we've done that though, you'll notice that our tracker has shot way off here over to the right side. That is because if we take a look at our gradient blur and expand point one, you'll notice that if I set the position down to zero, zero, that there is a 0 0.5 offset and we need to adjust for that offset. Selecting our link parameter, find the X offset and set that to negative 0 0.5. So we have now offset that position so that our tracker is going to be located directly on top of where we have this point. So as I move this left and right, you'll see how that is linked. But we also want it to work in the Y direction. With our link selected, let's go ahead and rename this to be link X. Then I'll push Command D to duplicate that and we'll rename it to be link Y. 
Now that we've done that, we can go over to Compatible Parameters, Filters, Gradient Blur, Point, and then select Y. After that, we need to change the target parameter from the X position over to Target Parameters, Properties, Transform, Position, and Y. So now the Y position of that Gradient Blur effect is applying to our tracker. However, again, we need to adjust the offset because you'll see how it's shooting up here way off the screen. So find that offset parameter, negative 0.5, and you should be good to go. So now wherever we move this point to, that line is going to move with it. Now that we've done that, select your link X and link Y parameters. Push Command C to copy it, then find Tracker 2 and push Command V to paste that. We should have link X copy and link Y copy. Then from there, we're going to come over to the compatible parameters, go down to Filters, Gradient Blur, and find point 2. Under our source parameter, we can see that it is for the Y value, so let's go ahead and just adjust that. Again, we're going to need to re-add that offset. I don't know why motion resets that every single time. Then we can go down to the second parameter, filters, gradient blur, 0.2, and X. Now again, we'll just offset that, negative 0.5. And now you'll see that the gradient blur is adjusting wherever these position points are. Now what's going to be important is in Final Cut Pro, we don't want the position of this to be rendered out. So let's go ahead and just disable the visibility of our trackers and of our line. So now we just have these on-screen controls invisibly adjusting this line that we've created. Now the reason we needed to create this line is because we're going to use a filter called Motion path and with motion path we can use the geometry of an object to adjust where the animation takes place. So selecting this group that contains our effect source we can go up to behaviors basic motion then select motion path. By default if I zoom out you can see that we have these two control points adjusting the position of our object. However in Final Cut Pro we will not have access to these control points. Finding this path shape we can change the open spline over to geometry then we can find the line that is being adjusted by that gradient blur effect, click and drag the line into this well. And already you'll see that the position of our effect source has changed. So if we play through, it now has this nice little animation sliding back and forth. However, we want it to start off directly in the center. So to do that, we'll find our gradient blur, we'll find point one, and then set that to zero and zero. So now this is going to be directly in the center but you'll notice that we have these beautiful on-screen controls and the animation path is going to work perfectly with our effect source. But there's gonna be another important factor in Final Cut Pro because at this moment, we cannot see these on-screen controls. So come on over to the left side and find Publish OSC. Go ahead and enable that in your gradient blur and now you will be able to adjust these parameters directly in Final Cut. Now there's a few things that we're gonna to wanna to publish over to Final Cut Pro so we have really fine-tuned adjustments over this effect. Firstly, we may wanna publish the point Point one and point two in case somebody wants specific numeric values for where the positions are. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this down arrow and then select publish and we'll do that as well for point two. Then jumping inside of the motion path parameter we can locate stuff like the offset so we can go ahead and publish that. Then we can also publish the direction. I'll do that. The speed and you'll also want to publish this custom speed parameter so that if somebody sets it over to custom, they have full control over the animation. Finally, there's apply speed. We can go ahead and publish that as well as loops, how many times it's going to repeat the animation. And finally, the end condition, which is repeat, we'll go ahead and publish that as well. So now that we've published these parameters, we just need to push command S to save it. Then we can type in whatever we want to call this. I'll just call it the animator. We'll go into our categories and throw it into whatever category that we like and push publish. Heading on over to Final Cut Pro, I have this really basic project set up. If I were to apply this effect onto this logo, we would run into an issue. If I select this logo, you'll notice that it has a square aspect ratio. So if I were to apply this effect, as that logo got over to the right side, it would actually cut off at this edge. So we need to conform this over to a 16 by nine video. To do that, we can find the logo down here on my timeline. And as long as it's in a 16 by nine project, we can right click, then select new compound clip. You can call it whatever you want and then push okay. So now this is a 16 by nine clip, which will have no issues when we apply this effect. Jumping on over into our effects, let's look up the animator. 
and go ahead and apply that. And already you can see the animation is taking place. Now we can go ahead and click and drag these two points to wherever we want and the animation will take place. But we can also change the speed from constant over to something like ease both. So now it's going to start off slowly, build up some momentum and then slow down. What's also really handy is we could shorten down the length of this to speed it up, just like so. But then if we want it to stop at the end, we can push option, click and drag to duplicate that. Then we can go ahead and find the loops and set that to zero. So that means the animation is going to be locked at the start point. After that, we could change the direction from forward over to reverse. So now the animation will play out. It'll move over to that bottom right and it will stop. Then from there, we could duplicate that once more. We could go ahead and adjust the position of our animation. So maybe we want it to go to the left side now. We could change our loops over back to one. And from there, we can go ahead and push play. So it moves to that bottom right corner, stops, and then moves to the bottom left hand corner. And finally, something that's really, really powerful with this is we could create a nice hover animation. I'm gonna duplicate this one more time. And from here, I'm going to select the animator. Let's go ahead and just move the position into place like so. And I'm gonna extend out the length of this. So we now have this basic animation of it playing down to the bottom, but then let's change the loop amount. We'll set this to five and we'll change the end condition from repeat over to ping pong. So if I push play, we now have this nice little hover animation. You can also change the apply speed over to the entire duration. So it will start out with that easing and end with that easing, but the mid animations with the loops will not have that easing. So there is a ton of potential power with this particular effect. And I think it's really valuable to know how to get it from motion over into Final Cut Pro. That said, if you don't feel like following all of these steps, you can of course go over to my Patreon to download it. But if you want a plugin that is far more capable than what this one can do, I highly recommend you check out Add Motion. This video is not sponsored in any way, but Add Motion is one of my most used plugins for Final Cut Pro, and it takes this concept and absolutely brings it up to 11. So if you're interested in that, I do have an affiliate link down below and you can check out that effect. I use it in pretty much every single video that I create. If this video was helpful to you in any way, I highly recommend you check out this video where I show you 10 essential tips for Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.